Alright guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So today I get to make a short video about something that I am really excited about because this is a free resource that does not get talked about enough in the homestead, off-grid, solar, all those different like videos you'll see. They don't talk about this free resource as being useful because it does take a little work to make it useful and that's treadmill motors. Now these are permanent magnet motors. Now I'm not going to try and get into all the details of all this. I just got a short display to show you that they do produce power. They really have, some of them have some really low cut in speeds. And then I want to talk to you about where I got these two and what I'm going to do with them. Now, when I say treadmill motor, I mean like a physical you walk on treadmill. If you guys don't know, these things are constantly being thrown away, given away. It would just amaze you. Now, if I see one of these on the side of the road, I always tear the motor out of it. Now, 90% of all of them I've tore down, which I've scrapped a bunch of these. The other thing wrong with these is normally not the motor. If something's wrong, it's either the belt or the electronics. It's almost never the motor. These motors are like giant bricks the way they're built. It's amazing. You can get one that's been sat outside and it'll be completely waterlogged. I'll tear it apart, pull the motor out of it, and it'll work like a charm. I don't know why the electronics on these things fail so badly or if the mats are just so bad, but almost everywhere you can find these. If you've got a college town near you, when it's checked, like when the end of the semester, you'll find these things out in the dumpsters like crazy. Now, your local Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace are another obvious place to find these. Most people give these things away, guys. Now, why these are important are you essentially if you go out and try and buy a PMA or like a wind turbine or something you're gonna pay big time for these motors If you go to like Granger and try and buy these exact motors they're gonna be super expensive it is insane what they cost you can make them but it's 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 a lot of work it's a lot of effort this for me is that perfect middle ground of a free resource that actually can be turned into something depending upon which motor you get because I will say not all these motors are created equal now for our experiment today I'm just gonna show you guys that these things do produce power now I'm gonna do that real simply with this little piece and all that is is a little cigarette lighter USB charger you plug into your car we're gonna hook this up to these motors, give them a quick spin with the hand, see if we can get them to produce any power. But first, I wanna go over the specs of each of these motors because they are very, very different. So as we're looking at them here, our first one we've got, let me get the camera so it'll do its thing. Let's try this. All right, so as we go in and look at these, you'll see that it says DCPM. Now, that's a permanent magnet, DC permanent magnet motor, two horsepower, 10 amps, 90 volts, clockwise rotation, 4700 RPM cut in, and it says duty treadmill. Now, if we go over to this other one, this one says PMDC motor model, and it's a 2.8 horsepower treadmill, the duty at 130 volts DC, 2.25 horsepower continuous duty, 110 volt DC, 1,678 watts, and it's external fan. Both these are external fan. That's what these are. So when you look at these, they're beat up. They're not in the greatest of shape, but they do work. Now let's see if we can get them to produce a little power. All right, you guys are going to have to bear with me here as I try and make this work. So this would be where you'd put your phone USB cord in and to charge your phone. Now, if you look right here, it's got a little tiny light bulb. So I'm going to touch this. Let's see if I can make this thing light up. Well, we got a little light there for a second. Let's see if I can do better. there's a little just a little bit of light so that's a bigger motor even though it's a smaller motor it's actually a 2.8 horsepower so the cut ins higher in other words the rpm needs to be higher before it cuts in to start making power but let's try it on the other one 
and maybe it'll have a lower cut in speed. Try and get it connected. Let's see if we can get some power. Yeah, look at that. Barely had to turn it to get it to cut in. So I don't know if you guys can see that little red light there, but if I can get it going any faster here, you can see that it's lit up. So that clearly shows that that works. Now this doesn't exactly want to stay where it's supposed to stay as you can see. But let's try and actually turn a phone on with it. Alright guys, let's see if we can get it spinning fast enough to charge the phone. And there it went. We are charging. Charging 53% one hour till full. Okay, and there it stopped charging. So, before we go mess with anything, I want to actually show you guys, so excuse the camera work. That goes straight to there. And that goes straight into there. You can see it. Nothing tricky, no batteries, just that motor producing. So yes, I know that was a kind of crude experiment, but it just shows what's possible. Whether you were to hook this up to one of those little bikes or whether you were to use it for something else, they do produce power. This one has a very low cut in, which means it doesn't need to achieve many RPM in order to start producing power. Now this one over here obviously would take a lot more. Now this was very crude. If you were going to use this, say, in an on-grid situation, it wouldn't be very viable. If you're trying to grid tighten these, you're not going to make enough power to really do much, in my opinion. I mean, I'm sure there's ways to do it, but it's not something I'm going to invest a lot of time in. Where these come in handy, I feel like, is when you want to add a little power to your batteries. Maybe you got your solar going, but this is for something when there's days there's not a lot of light, or as I'm about to explain, two different scenarios that we're going to use them for. Since this one has a low cut in on it, this one I'm probably going to try and play with wind. As I said, I have nothing in these motors. I just pulled them out of old broken treadmills along the side of the road. So I might try and do a little playing with wind. Is it going to produce a bunch? Probably not. I'm not in a high wind place. I am on top of a hill, so I do have the best option of wind in my area. But it's probably not going to produce anything massive. But a small charge continuously going to my batteries is always going to be helpful, especially as we try and take the tiny house off grid. Now, saying that, that we're trying to make it go off grid, you're going to need at times to generate power to charge your batteries because there's going to be snow on your panels or whatever the case is. Now we've gone back and forth a bunch about generators and I have everyone and their brother tell me, why don't you have a generator? We've never needed them. You know, if we really needed power, I would plug a inverter into my truck and just zoom my truck up for a while. We never really needed it. We got oil lamps, we got different heaters, we got tablets we can charge up and then watch TV on. We've never needed them in power outages. But it's nice to have. But then I went and priced them. And even the Predator ones, which are not too bad at Harbor Freight, still just don't exactly make me want it. So, this bad boy, I have an eight horse motor that runs really good. It's a bottom shaft on an old mower that the deck went bad. So I'm going to take this and connect it up in a belt drive system to that bottom shaft eight horse motor, essentially making myself a generator to charge my batteries with. Now, since I don't have anything in the motor because it's just an old motor I'd laying around and I don't have anything in that treadmill motor, if I can pull together a base or maybe something with wheels super cheap, then I'll pretty much have nothing in my generator other than the charge controller I'm going to need. Now obviously I'll have to buy a decent one because we'll be dealing with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, more about that later. We have some other lithium iron phosphate stuff that we just got that we'll talk about more. But this is something that people should look at. I mean. If you've got, like I know some guys that use these as like water turbines. 
you know, they'll have a turbine spin and then they end up spinning this motor separately so it doesn't get wet. And maybe that's not the most efficient way to do it, but I will say that for free, if you can get your hands on some of these, you can produce power. Find one with a low cut in especially, and it really doesn't take much. Now with that said, these guys are gonna get put through their paces because we have all kinds of stuff we're trying to play with. From biogas, to solar, to wind, lots of different technologies we're gonna play with, maybe even some steam. But just wanted to talk to you guys about this. It's not something that I'm seeing a lot of people talking about anymore. I feel like it's a forgotten method to get some power. I mean, for us, having this to charge the batteries we're gonna have, instead of buying a thousand dollar generator I mean you do the math on that free versus thousand dollar generator with that said though if you haven't already and I don't know why you wouldn't have by now come on guys go down hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you see all of our upcoming videos make sure you give us a like drop a comment let us know if you've ever played with these treadmill motors or maybe you have some laying around that you're getting ready to do projects we'd love to hear about it and we will see you guys in the next one. I'm sure I'm lucky I got a cool wife that'll let me play with treadmill motors on the kitchen table. <laughs>